Yeah, I'm I'm there. I hope you can see my slides. No, Vinay. Um, I have done the screen sharing. <clears throat> Are the slides there? Yeah, now it is. Yes, yes, Vinay. Yeah. Okay. So basically, um, I'm going to talk about our uh, experience of 20 years, and I have to cover this over the next 10 minutes. Um, dealing with children with congenital glaucoma. So when you're dealing with um, these kids, you have to understand the anatomy of the eye, exactly what happens and why um, the congenital glaucoma develops. So normally the trabecular meshwork kind of slides posteriorly to open uh, the area which is then amenable for the aqueous to, out, uh, to flow out. But when this doesn't happen, then um, the iris and the uveal tissue are inserted much anteriorly and this then prevents the aqueous to kind of get obstructed. So if you look at a gonioscopy of these kids, you, what you see is that the, that the angle has a high iris insertion and in some cases there is an abnormal tissue that covers the angle. And this abnormal tissue is so thick that it is almost like a membrane and that's why it needs to be cut in the form of a goniotomy. You can see how thick this iris tissue is. It's almost like a featureless angle in these patients. So when we did uh, a high definition anterior segment OCT in these eyes, we found that there is actually a very thick membrane occluding the aqueous outflow. And this happens uh, in a lot of these kids um, and, and, and prevents the, um, the aqueous outflow. And what also you can see is that there is no Schlem's canal. So these images are, are of very high definition ASOCT in children of congenital glaucoma. Here is a case of a unilateral congenital glaucoma and you can see the right eye, which is normal, has a normal rarefied trabecular meshwork and a Schlem's canal compared to let's say the left eye, which is affected and has an abnormal tissue at the angle and no Schlem's canal. So apart from an abnormal tissue at the angle, they also have a lack of Schlem's canal and this needs to be understood when you're managing these children, because if you're doing just one procedure like a goniotomy or a, maybe a trabeculotomy, you're not taking care of the aqueous outflow channels totally, which in a lot of these cases, especially the ones that come to us are um, abnormal. So that means the abnormality that, that we see in our eyes, in our Indian um, children with pediatric glaucoma is more severe than what is seen in the Western um, countries. Another thing that you must understand is that the eye stretches. This eye stretches, the, the iris is thinned out, the ciliary bodies is splayed, the zonules are kind of, kind of um, stretched out. And you can also see in some cases the anatomy is so abnormal that the ciliary body is kind of taking insertion from the iris. So when you're doing surgery in these eyes, and you must understand that if you try and go very posterior, you might hit the ciliary body and you might have a lot of bleeding or they might be vitreous. So therefore, whatever surgeries you do in these, in these children, you have to remain quite anterior so that you don't hit the vitreous or the ciliary body. So again, the clinical significance of understanding the anatomy is that you have to be as anterior as possible when you're doing your incisions and your excisions. Another important thing that you have to understand is that these kids come in varied form. You know, there'll be, there'll be children which have totally opacified corneas and there'll be yet there'll be those kids who have very large corneas, but have got, which are clear. So then your decision making, your decision to operate depends upon what is the condition of the eye. If, if you cannot see any of the structures, like in this particular case, then probably you will just do a trabeculotomy with a trabeculectomy. On the contrary, in this particular child where you can see your angle and the glaucoma is not so severe, you would you could go get away with doing a goniotomy. But then you must understand whatever surgery you decide to do, you must understand that that has to be the best and the most appropriate option for you because you do not want to expose this child to multiple anesthesias. You do not want multiple surgeries, multiple EUA visits, and therefore all of the, 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 the problems that are associated with this, which are associated with the parents also. I can go on with, the, with showing you a, a video of a trabeculectomy with a trabeculotomy because this is important when people are doing it. And the important questions which a lot of ophthalmologists want to know is whether to do a whether to do a limbal based trabeculectomy or a phonics based trabeculectomy in a child. 
in a very young child, less than two years, I would always do a limbal based surgery because a phonic space surgery in a child means a lot of sutures and these sutures will then have to be subsequently removed. And we do not want to do that because we want to avoid as many examination and anesthesia, anesthesia visits as possible. The other thing that you must understand is that the tenons capsule is extremely thick in these children. So because it is very thick, in some cases, some people like to do a tenotomy, tenectomy. Mitomycin use is important. I use mitomycin in almost all children primarily because the fibrosis is very quick and very fast. And therefore it is imperative that you use mitomycin for optimal success rates. Another thing when you're doing a, a, a trabeculectomy is that is different from adults is that because the sclera is very stretched out and thin, uh, these kids will have a very paper thin sclera. And therefore you do not, you have to be very careful when you are doing a, a, a scleral incision in, and, and when you're doing your scleral flap because it might just tear through and which could be a disaster um, uh, in managing the complications later on. So therefore, uh, when you're doing a, a, a scleral um, excision, you have to be very, uh, very sure that you're very gentle with the sclera and, um, and you make a large flap. You see, a large flap means that you are able to excise a large amount of trabecular, trabecular uh, meshwork. Because unlike adults, here one or two punches would not work. There is total dysgenesis 360 degrees and therefore you have to kind of excise also a large amount of um, trabecular uh, ostium. The, the rest of the surgeries is, is more or less the same. Since it's a trabeculotomy, you have to understand the anatomy again to, to be able to um, know your landmarks, where you have to make an incision to get your Schlem's canal. So some people like to tell the anesthetist to give a slight uh, pressure of the jugular vein so that you can get blood into the Schlem's canal. And that makes easy identification of the Schlem's canal possible. Um, but in most cases, once you're experienced, you can kind of get the Schlem's canal easily. We also tend to put the uh, mitomycin for some time under the scleral flap because in children, the sclera itself gets fibrosed very quickly. So it's important to have some antifibrotic under the scleral flap. So now we are, we are identifying where the Schlem's canal is. It's generally at the zone where the sclera meets the, the blue limbus. And, 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 and once you're experienced, you can actually find it very quickly. But in those eyes where the limbus is extremely stretched, it might be extremely very difficult to get the Schlem's canal. Now, for example, in this case, it was easy and you can see that there's a sudden gush of fluid and you're pretty sure that you are into the Schlem's canal. It's also important that you do your trabeculotomy with a good harms trabeculotomes. Getting access to a harms trabeculotome is also difficult because it's not, uh, not everybody makes it, but um, it has to be of adequate caliber and it should not be too thick or too thin. So this is a, the trabeculotomy being done on both the sides. It's important that you do not um, touch the uveal tissue because if you do that, then there will be a lot of pigment release. So you, when you see blood, then you, you're pretty sure that you are into the um, into the uh, um, uh, into the um, Schlem's canal, and this is on the other side. So the idea is that you're do actually doing two surgeries. You're doing a trabeculotomy with a trabeculectomy, which means that you are increasing the success rate. That means even if one of the surgeries fails in these kids, the other um, surgery takes over, and that. Um, gives a much longer term success rates compared to, let's say, doing a single surgery, like doing a, only a guniotomy or only a trabeculotomy. So a trabeculectomy with a trabeculotomy is, is, is the ideal, especially in those cases which have very advanced disease, those cases where um, the cornea would not give you access to, the, to do a guniotomy. Um, so I, as you can see, I've made a very large ostium in, the, in, the, in this child, primarily because... Um, the chances of failure are very high. So I'm not going into the, um, into the further surgery because of lack of time. The next important surgery in these uh, kids that you have to do is guniotomy. So this uh, guniotomy I've done under the intraoperative um, OCT and you can see that um, uh, there is a high insertion of the angle uh, of the iris, sorry, in this case, and you can see the abnormal tissue um, at, the, at, at the angle, which needs to be cut. As I said, goniotomy is to be primarily done in children who do not have an advanced stage of glaucoma where the cornea is clear and where you can get away with, with, um, um, with a surgery which might give a good long-term uh, uh, surgical success without having to create a bleb. So when you're doing a goniotomy, you can see the iris fall through back. As you can see in this case, um, 
a large amount of iris falls back. There is some amount of bleeding which you expect, but then the results are quite good if the if, if the glaucoma is not advanced. So this is um, a case of paniotomy. You can get a little bit of blood. People have also described um, doing a 360 degrees trabeculotomy, which is circumferential. Um, the problem with this is that uh, you may not get access to 360 degrees all the time, which makes um, the failure rates pretty high. The results of surgery in children are miraculous. You can see how a, a, a hazy cornea completely clears up in a lot of these kids. This child was brought to me one year after surgery. I was shocked when the parents showed me how the child looked um, when he was born. And you can see the dramatic improvement and now the child is, is seeing well um, and, and is mobile. Another thing that is miraculous or dramatic that happens is the cup disc ratio. The cup disc ratio totally um, comes back to its normal si size, which um, uh, is very good in these children. And it's more important to document that this is happening. But what does not change is the harp stry. The harp stry do not come back, which means that they will stay there. They will cause some amount of photophobia and this has to be explained to the parents. In the post-surgical uh, uh, management of these kids, it's important to do examination under anesthesia every six months and monthly thereafter till the child is old enough for an OPD examination. This is especially when everything is okay. But when, um, when uh, the things are not well controlled, you may have to do the EUAs more often. And every EUA must be accompanied by doing a refraction and intraocular pressure and of course, doing amblyopia therapy as, as quickly as possible. A refraction is important because once you've done surgery, there is a possibility that the eye, the axial length might change. It may decrease, it may increase, and this can be um, found out or monitored when you are doing subsequent refractions. So um, managing these kids is just not about um, uh, doing surgery, but it's also about managing the strabismus and myopia that ensues as also in some cases, you may require keratoplasty. Also, something that is overlooked in these children is the fact that a retina evaluation needs to be done because if their axillins are long, then they will have a lot of um, chances of peripheral retinal degenerations and retinal detachments that also need to be looked into. We have recently published a 30-year experience of managing these kids um, and the visual outcomes that are associated with uh, kids who have congenital glaucomas. And, and what we saw was that a visual equity of 618 could not be achieved in more than about 30 to 35% of the cases. So almost um, 60 to 65% of the patients would have, or eyes would have visual equity less than 6 by 18. And the reasons primarily for that is that amblyopia is not addressed. So amblyopia is a very important problem um, that precludes uh, their um, good vision and that has to be tackled as early as possible. Many of these kids would develop um, would develop cataract also because you've done surgery and at least about 10% of these congenital glaucoma is post-surgery, five years, 10 years down the line might develop cataract, which you may have to tackle. There are some of these kids who will not respond to one trabeculectomy, one surgery, another surgery may have to be done, a third surgery may be have to be done. I have, I restrict my glaucoma drainage devices in kids primarily because you do not know what this tube is going to do in these kids 10 years down the line. There is going to be problems with the endothelium and that has to be taken care of and therefore they have to be used as a last resort. Cyclodestructive procedures are, are good, but only temporary. They also give temporary relief and may have to be repeated multiple number of times to get adequate IOP control. So I can only summarize by saying that understanding the anatomy of, of, of these eyes is important when you're doing surgery. Um, it's for those who are not doing many of these surgeries, best is to refer to those centers where there are experienced surgeons who are dealing with these problems. And after all, whatever you have done, you must understand it will have a long-term consequence. It's important to make the parents understand, especially if they're coming from low socioeconomic status. So we have booklets for these kids, or for the parents of these kids, so that they can understand what the disease is about. And that's very important um, when you are um, managing these kids. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much.